Welcome to AP Chemistry and General Chemistry. I am Jeremy Krug, and in this lesson, we're going to be learning about electrolysis, which is another application of electrochemistry. My channel has the entire AP Chemistry course, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss a thing. Now, in our last video, we were looking at some applications of electrochemistry. Here's a very common one. If we take a power source, and we hook it up to two electrodes, and we dip those two electrodes into an aqueous solution of ions. We can power two separate half reactions. And here's an example of that. So here I have some nickel-2 chloride. So we have some nickel ions, some nickel-2 ions in solution, some chloride ions in solution. But there's also another substance that's there too. And we don't want to forget about that. That's the water we have three things that could potentially be, be reacting. So here's the question. The question is, a current of electricity is passed through this solution of nickel-2 chloride. We have five parts. Determine the reduction half reaction. Determine the oxidation half reaction. Write the overall balanced equation for this electrolytic cell. We call it electrolytic because it's electrolysis taking place as an outside power source. Part D says determine the overall E cell, the overall potential difference of this cell. And then part E says calculate the delta G of the cell. So what we have to do here is start at the beginning. Let's determine the reduction half reaction. Now, in our mind, we want to consider that there are two possible things that could be reduced. What's going to be reduced? Well, I know that positive metallic ions generally tend to be reduced so we could have that but it could also be the water because that's present in this mixture as well so which of these two will be reduced we don't know so what we're gonna to have to do is write out the half reactions for both of those possibilities now here is the half reaction for the reduction of nickel ions into plain nickel metal and there's the half reaction, and we have the cell or the half reaction potential for that, the uh, reduction potential, negative 0.23 volts. That's right out of the list of reduction half reactions. You can look that up online or in your textbook, or your teacher may have uh, given you a, a copy of that list. But we also have water. And if we look at that very same list, we'll find that water can be reduced by this half reaction right here where two water molecules can pick up two electrons and they become two molecules of hydrogen gas and two hydroxide ions. And the uh, reduction potential for that is negative 0.83 volts. Now, if we have these two half reactions written down, only one of them can take place. How do we know which one takes place? Well, it's the one that's the most positive. And so that's something that we kind of uh, referred to a little bit in the last video. We have all these half reactions. We have all these uh, reduction half reactions. They can all take place in theory. But the one that's most positive will be the one that's more likely to take place compared to one that's more negative. So the one that's more positive, you know, negative 0.23 is more positive there. So that's the one that takes place the nickel-2 ions are going to be reduced. Now, how do we figure out the oxidation half reaction? It's a very similar process. Remember, though, what could be oxidized? It could be these negative anions that could be uh, oxidized. And so we can write that half reaction. The chloride ions could become chlorine gas, Cl2. So we could write that out. There's the half reaction for that. And if we look up or, or try to find this half reaction on the list of half reactions on, in your textbook or on that table, you aren't going to find it. You'll find the reverse of this. You'll find Cl2 plus two electrons yields two Cl negative. But we want to write this as an oxidation. So that's why I had to flip it and write it as an oxidation. When I flip the reaction or the half reaction, I have to change the sign of that potential there. So in the textbook, it's written as a 
positive 1.36 volts because it's the reverse of this reaction. But since I flipped it, I changed the sign to negative 1.36 volts. Now, we also can find an oxidation of water. Water actually loses electrons. And we can find something like this, although in your textbook or in your list of reduction a half reactions, you aren't going to find this, like I mentioned earlier. You're going to find the reverse of this. So you'll find O2 plus 4H plus plus 4 electrons yields 2 water. And the voltage, or the E on that, would be positive 1.23 volts. But remember, we have to write this as an oxidation. So that's why I had to flip it. 2 waters yield O2 plus 4H plus plus 4 electrons. And I change the sign of E, so it's negative 1.23 volts. So I've written both these possibilities. You know, one of those two things is going to be oxidized. Now once again, how do we know which one of those is actually going to take place? Once again, it's the one that's got the most positive potential. Half reactions with the most positive of potentials are the ones that are more likely to take place. So in this case, that's the second one. It's actually going to be water that's oxidized in this case. So that chloride, guess what? In this case, the chloride is actually going to be a, a spectator ion, as it turns out. So let's go on to part C, where we're asked to write the overall balanced equation for this electrolytic cell. Well, we've done the hard part. We now just have to take those two half reactions that we wrote, that we selected in the last two sections, and add them together. So when you add them together, uh, can we add them as they stand? I don't think so, because we have two electrons here, and that won't cancel out with the four electrons down here. So I'm going to have to multiply the top half reaction by two in order to make that work, like this. So now we have four electrons that will cancel out on both sides of the arrow. And when you add it up, it looks like this. And so I've went ahead and added the states in there. So we have two Nickel 2 ions aqueous plus 2 water molecules liquid yield 2 nickel atoms solid. And there's an oxygen molecule that's a gas and 4 hydrogen ions which are aqueous. Now, let's determine the overall potential difference. Let's find the E cell in this electrolytic cell. And that's pretty simple. We already have the two half reactions. We just have to add the two uh, together. You know, one is written as an oxidation, one is written as a reduction, so we just add them together. So negative 0.23 and negative 1.23 give us negative 1.46 volts. And that may seem kind of strange to us because we're not used to negative voltages. But don't forget, this is not a, just a plain old galvanic cell. We're actually adding electricity to make this work. So that's why it's a negative voltage, a negative uh, potential difference. Let's calculate delta G now. We had an entire video about this in the last uh, series of uh, videos in Lesson 19. If you f forgot about how to do that, well, you can watch this example or go back and look at that video too. We use the equation delta G equals negative NFE. So we're trying to find delta G. How many electrons did we cancel out in that last slide there? We had four, didn't we? So this is going to be four will be in, in there for N. N is your number of electrons that you cancel out. F is Faraday's constant, which is 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons. And then the E, that E cell, was negative 1.46 volts, or joules per coulomb. And so when you do the arithmetic here, we find that delta G is just positive 564,000 joules per mole. Or we traditionally put that in kilojoules per mole, positive 564 kilojoules per mole. So, is this a thermodynamically favored process? Well, I hope you see that since delta G is positive, the answer is no. And that's just a straightforward mathematical way of, of, of seeing that this is not a, a TFP. Another way that we can figure that out without even having to do the, the math problem here is by realizing that we are applying an external power source. Anytime that we require an external electrical current or some sort of external power source for the reactions to, to take place, it tells us it is not 
spontaneous. It's not a thermodynamically favored process, and it won't happen just, just on its own. Let's try another example to make sure that we can do these, because these are pretty tough problems. We have a very similar problem here, but this time our solution is copper to bromide. So here we have the copper to bromide, and let's start with the reduction half reaction. So once again, in our mind, we're trying to decide what's going to be reduced. It could be the water, but it could be the metallic ions, right? Those uh, positive metallic ions could be reduced as well. So let's write out those possible half reactions. We could have the copper 2 being reduced down into copper metal. And the list of uh, reduction potentials gives the E for that as positive 0.34 volts. And then water could be one of the other possibilities, could be the other possibility. And that's the same half reaction that we had before. You'll find that these pop up quite a bit in this lesson. And the uh, potential for that is a negative 0.83 volts, just like it was in the last example. Once again, we're going to select which one of these? The one that's the most positive, right? The one that has the most positive uh, potential is the one that's more likely to take place. So that's the copper, isn't it? We're going to have the copper ions being reduced in this case because it's the more positive. Now let's do the oxidations. Those may be a little bit more tricky just because we have to flip the equations that are given to us in the list of reduction half reactions. So we can have the bromide oxidized. Uh, so let's write that out. We have Br negative, and that's going to turn into Br2. You know, that's diatomic. We balance it. We got two electrons. And when we look that up in the reduction uh, potentials list, we find, of course, something that looks like this. We have to flip it. And the voltage is probably given to us as positive 1.09 volts. But since we flipped it and wrote it as an oxidation, we have to change the sign of the, uh, of the uh, potential. So it becomes negative 1.09 volts. And then we have the oxidation of water, just like we had in the last example as well, where two water molecules become an oxygen molecule and four H pluses and four electrons. So of those two, which one is the more likely to take place? Once again, it's always going to be the most positive, isn't it? So it's the bromide that's going to be oxidized this time. So in this case, water is, let's not call it the spectator ion, because it's not really an ion, but water is not really going to be uh, participating in the reaction uh, specifically, at least not in this electrolysis part of it. So now let's go on to part C, where we have to write the overall balanced equation. Remember, at this point, we've done all the, the hard work. We, We've done all the, the, uh, the, the, the difficult part of this. Now we just take those two half reactions that we selected in the last part, or the last two parts, and add them together. Can we add these two half reactions as they stand? Well, I believe we can because the two electrons here will cancel out with the two electrons on the right side. So we don't have to do any multiplication this time, do we? It just works out perfectly. So we have copper 2, which is aqueous plus two bromide ions, which are aqueous, will give us a copper atom, solid, and one molecule of bromine liquid. So that's the overall balanced equation. The overall potential difference, we just have to add these two potentials together, and we get negative 0.75 volts. Remember, it's negative because we're having to add an external power source here. Part E says calculate the delta G of the cell. We're going to use that same equation we did before. Delta G equals negative NFE. So we're trying to solve for the Gibbs free energy change, delta G. And how many electrons did we cancel out in that last balanced, in that last, uh, balanced equation there? Two, right? We had to cancel two of those electrons out. So it's two that will go in for N, number of electrons. F is Faraday's constant, 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons. And then our E cell was negative 0.75 volts, or joules per coulomb. So when you do the math here, we get that delta G equals positive 
145,000 joules per mole. And of course, I'll change that to kilojoules per mole because that's how we normally write these. And so since it's positive, is this a thermodynamically favored process? Well, electrolytic cells, no. If, as long as you have to add an external power source, it's not a thermodynamically favored process. There's a lot going on here, folks. If you understand this, then you're doing a good job. You can pat yourself on the back here. It might take several examples working through this to really get how this is done. This is, this is pretty tough stuff to, to, to decide which of those half reactions are actually going to be used. And then, you know, add all this up and then find delta G and then find the E cell. However, when this is done, it's actually very useful for commercial uh, purposes. As we'll notice in the next video, that video is going to be all about uh, how much of the metal or how much of the non-metal can be produced in this electrolysis process. If you learned something from this video, if you'd be so kind as to hit that like button, I'd really appreciate it. That way uh, YouTube will uh, get the word out about, about my videos to other chemistry students. I'm Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching chemistry for a long time, and I want you to get a five on your AP exam and A in your chemistry class. Thanks for watching my video. I hope to see you again where we can learn some more chemistry together.